of New York and New Jersey, first public agency of its kind in the United States, operates 26 facilities of transport and commerce in the 1,500 square mile area that centers on New York Harbor's famous Statue of Liberty. To finance its projects, the authority issues bonds backed by the strength of its operating revenues. The Bi-State Compact, which established the agency in 1921, required it to be self-supporting without power to tax or pledge the credit of either state. Directing the authority's work is an unsalaried board of 12 commissioners, six appointed by the governor of New York and six by the governor of New Jersey. The board meets regularly to review progress and approve plans for facilities that now represent an investment of nearly $3 billion. Kennedy International Airport, aerial gateway to the United States, serves as the long haul specialist in the trio of airports operated by the Port Authority. New aircraft like the DC-10, the 747, and the latest member of the wide-body jet family, the L-1011, are helping it keep up with mushrooming demands that saw a 12% rise in overseas travel last year. To serve its growing volume of patrons, 21 million in 1972, Kennedy has doubled the size of the International Arrivals Building and streamlined customs processing and baggage handling. Some patrons need special assistance, and here, too, Kennedy has the answers. Signs in several foreign languages direct non-English-speaking passengers to their destinations, and to provide a needed personal touch, the multilingual Golden Girls are on hand to answer questions and help with problems. For more convenient airport access, a high-speed rail link is planned between Kennedy and Midtown Manhattan. At the airport, passenger terminals have been expanded by TWA and by Pan American, which has also opened a maintenance hangar to service its fleet of 747s. BOAC and Air Canada share another passenger facility, and a new terminal has also been built by National Airlines. Keeping pace with progress at Kennedy is nearby LaGuardia Airport where recent tests have proved the ability of new wide-bodied jets to meet federal noise level standards. LaGuardia, chiefly a short-haul facility, is often called the briefcase airport because its convenience to Manhattan makes it especially popular for business travel. Serving nearly half the region's domestic air travelers, it has enjoyed the highest growth rate among Port Authority airports, with volume up 11% to 14 and a quarter million passengers last year. Since leasing LaGuardia in 1947, the authority has invested more than $150 million to develop it to its maximum practical capacity. Across the Hudson, Newark Airport has been renamed Newark International Airport to reflect the expanded range of services now offered at this pioneer aviation facility. An entirely new and modern airport, the new Newark, will result from the $400 million redevelopment program underway here. Nearing completion west of the present runway area is a three-terminal complex with satellite terminals that will accommodate 83 aircraft at one time. Terminal interiors are being finished by the airlines. By 1980, New York will handle 19 million passengers a year, nearly three times the present volume. Besides serving 42 million passengers, the authority's airports last year handled more than 1,117,000 tons of air cargo, much of it flown in and out aboard jets like this all-cargo 747. This has kept Kennedy and New York International in first and second place among world air freight facilities. With further advances in aircraft design, new terminal construction, on the automated handling of containers, all signs point to years of continued air cargo leadership by Port Authority airports. 
Each day, the Port Authority's four bridges and two tunnels carry half a million vehicles of all types across the waters dividing the bi-state port district, a fact which gives them an important role in the region's economy. The Lincoln and Holland tunnels provide direct links between major New Jersey highway systems and Manhattan's business district. Speeding traffic through the tunnels, a modern traffic control system permits control center personnel to monitor tunnel traffic electronically and dispatch emergency aid or adjust traffic flow as needed. Such innovations permit optimum use of facilities as traffic volumes rise. The two-level George Washington Bridge, connecting Upper Manhattan with Fort Lee, New Jersey, is the most heavily traveled of the authorities' bridges and tunnels. The stately span, the world's only 14-lane suspension bridge, is a famous Port District landmark. Last year, more than 160 million vehicles used this and the authorities' other crossings, including the Bayonne Bridge. PATH, the Port Authority's rapid transit rail line, marked its 10th year of operation in 1972 by serving a record 40 million riders. Meanwhile, construction continues at the Journal Square Transportation Center in Jersey City. The $80 million project, half financed by federal grants, will house the headquarters of a PATH system which the authority plans to extend to Newark International Airport and to the suburban Plainfield area. In Manhattan, most PATH commuters come into the new and ultra-modern World Trade Center PATH terminal. Over 85,000 travelers pass daily through the fully air-conditioned station, opened in 1971 to replace the old Hudson Terminal, originally built for PATH's predecessor, the Hudson and Manhattan Railroad. Passengers leaving specially designed PATH cars on the newly lengthened platform level have but a short escalator ride to the concourse area, which gives them direct access to the World Trade Center, all major city subway lines, and to the heart of the financial district of New York City. International commerce key to the bi-state region's economic leadership, has a new home these days in Lower Manhattan's soaring World Trade Center. First opened in 1970 and formally dedicated in April 1973, the Twin Towered Center will help further the authority's mandate to maintain and expand the flow of international trade through the Port District by bringing together in one place the traders of many lands and the varied services they need to carry out their business in a convenient and efficient manner. Information is the lifeblood of world trade, and the Trade Center's Information Center will be an important feature. Included in its communication systems is the latest equipment for handling data of every description. The center will soon be tied to a worldwide network providing instant access to information sources around the globe. Since even the most detailed descriptions cannot replace the real thing, the Trade Center will also provide product display areas to serve both marketers and prospective buyers who wish to examine available products. Regular conferences will deal with such problems as adapting products to specific markets. The World Trade Institute, another showpiece, is a reminder that people and ideas, not buildings or technology, are the real heart of the Center's activities. Through its World Trade curriculum and conferences for international businessmen, the Institute will help broaden understanding and improve techniques in international commerce. Another convenience, one-stop custom service will be offered at the new U.S. Custom House. When fully completed in 1975, the Trade Center will host 80,000 businessmen and tourists each day, in addition to a working population of 50,000. The incomparable views of the surrounding greater metropolitan area from atop its towers are sure to make the World Trade Center a prime attraction for millions every year, tourists and longtime residents alike. One of Midtown Manhattan's best known landmarks is the Port Authority Bus Terminal. This facility with 225,000 daily users is the world's busiest mass transportation terminal. For the benefit of New Jersey bus commuters, an exclusive bus lane, a Port Authority innovation, now speeds buses through many suburban communities into and through the Lincoln Tunnel, 
saving some 40,000 riders an average 15 minutes during the morning rush hours. In New York, elevated ramps to the terminal provide a similar exclusive roadway for nearly 6,000 buses each weekday. A $100 million expansion plan for the bus terminal will boost peak hour capacity by 50%. This addition would bring the authority's total investment here to over $160 million. Uptown, over the Manhattan approaches to the George Washington Bridge, stands the 10-year-old George Washington Bridge bus station. Closed circuit television monitors on its concourse level permit passengers to check the arrival of their buses on the platform above. Nature gave the Port of New York one of the world's great harbors, and the Port Authority has taken full advantage of this fact to develop a variety of marine cargo and passenger facilities within the Port District. Along the Brooklyn waterfront, the two-mile stretch of piers acquired in 1956 has been rebuilt and modernized as the Brooklyn Port Authority Marine Terminal. The Authority's Brooklyn piers now handle nearly two million tons of general cargo a year. On Midtown Manhattan's west side waterfront, where proud liners huddle side by side before the age of transatlantic air service, latter-day vessels like the sleek QE-2 will soon dock at a new passenger ship terminal built and operated by the Port Authority. The $37 million terminal, which is being financed principally by the city of New York, will be the most modern facility of its kind in the world and will feature temperature-controlled passenger lounges, improved baggage handling and custom service, convenient loading and unloading for vehicles, and parking for 1,000 cars atop the three modernized piers that make up the terminal. Across the harbor on Newark Bay, Port Newark, one of the authority's two major marine cargo installations, has been expanded. Through its birth in 1972 flowed more than three million tons of general cargo, lumber and meat, cars and bananas, a thousand things and more, bound to and from the docks of distant lands. Port Newark's ground transport connections are unsurpassed, and the program to acquire additional upland storage and distribution area assures ample space to handle America's ever-increasing flow of imports and exports. Containers are the name of the game at the neighboring Elizabeth Marine Terminal, which enjoys the same preeminence in handling containerized marine cargo that Kennedy Airport claims for air freight. Ships like the new SL-7 now serving Elizabeth are an important reason why containerization ranks increasingly as the most efficient way to ship cargo by sea. This container ship, the world's largest at present, carries 1,096 containers with a total weight up to 27,000 tons. Yet it can be fully unloaded and loaded again in less than 24 hours. Gantry cranes and other shore-based equipment mesh smoothly to speed unloaded containers to waiting trucks and distribution points. Last year, the terminal handled nearly 7 million tons of containerized cargo. When the authority completes its $205 million development program, the Elizabeth Terminal's annual capacity will rise to 12 million tons, and it will occupy an area of 1,000 acres that were once useless swampland. This, then, is the Port Authority. 26 land, sea, and air transport facilities operating day and night in the service of the people of New York, New Jersey, the nation, and the world. Now in its second half century, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey looks forward to expanded opportunities for public service as it works to assure the continued prosperity of the nation's greatest port.